Hi, my name is Jill Wooten, the founder of With Insight. Now, this is the third in a series of videos that we've made on post-traumatic stress disorder, that's PTSD. And today, in this video, you're going to learn exactly what happens in the brain to cause PTSD. In a nutshell, what happens is that the brain over-remembers a not-so-nice event and keeps reminding you of that. Now, as human beings, we have evolved a very special capacity for remembering things. And that's great because we don't have to relearn how to swim, relearn how to walk, um, think every time we want to drink, where, where do we get the water from or how do we make a cup, a cup of tea? Because that all just happens because those patterns of behaviour have been laid down at an instinctive level. Now, that is a brilliant thing for our everyday life, but when it comes to remembering the things that have happened that aren't so good, sometimes that process can go off track and cause a multitude of problems that end up in post-traumatic stress disorder. So, to understand this a little bit more clearly, we're going to use a diagram to help you really get to grips with what happens in the brain when somebody has got post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay, so there are three parts that I'm going to refer to and to help make it clear, here is a very basic model of the slate which represents the neocortex, the lock here which represents the hippocampus and the shell here which represents the limbic system and the amygdala. The amygdala is housed right inside the limbic system. Now, firstly, if we look at the neocortex, well, it's a piece of slate, really, but for the purposes of today, let's imagine that's the very forefront of your brain, the bit behind your forehead. Now, the neocortex is the newest part of the brain, and that itself is about 60 million years old. And it's responsible for the higher level functions in human beings, like empathy and strategic thinking. Now, its polar opposite is the amygdala. Okay, and the amygdala is one of the oldest parts of the brain and its main function is to prepare us for fight or flight in the face of any potential threat. So when something is frightening, the amygdala alerts our adrenals which lay just at the back of our rib cage, at the very bottom of our rib cage towards our back. The amygdala alerts those adrenals and then we're flooded with cortisol and adrenaline which helps you make um, your body really strong in case you need to fight something off and it also increases your capacity to run faster in case you need to get away from the situation. Now this is the hippocampus well again it's a lock but, but, but for the purposes of explana um, explanation and the hippocampus is the memory gate for the brain for anything to reach long-term memory storage to learn a new idea, a way of doing something, it has to come through this memory gate, through here and into the neocortex. Now, how do these three things operate to cause and maintain post-traumatic stress disorder? Let's look at the amygdala first. Again, housed within the limbic system, the oldest part of the brain. The amygdala has a brilliant memory and will try to store anything that has caused anxiety to be produced. Any information around when you felt really anxious, it will store away. Now, that can be anything from a person who's been a bit of a bully to you at work or to a major accident or to a physical attack. The amygdala stores this information in the form of our sensory perception, so that sight, what we see, our hearing, what we can hear, the smell, the scent of something, our, what we feel within it from our skin and what we actually can taste. Now, the amygdala and its patterns can lay pretty dormant until it senses that there is potentially something similar to that nasty environment that caused the problem in the first place that something similar in your environment now is present and it goes on red alert. It makes your adrenals fire off those chemicals 
to make you able to be really, really strong or to run really fast. It takes you into the fight or flight. Now that's a fantastic reaction and in many cases a life-saving reaction in the face of real danger. But if that happens on the way to taking the kids to school in the morning or the middle of a shopping mall when everything is fine, it causes a person to be suddenly thrown into a high state of panic. Now an example of this might be a person who's just been beaten up badly. They might be at a party and someone raised their arm to wave, someone, to, wave to someone and that person who's had um, been beaten up in the past might just feel a wave of panic go through them. And that's the amygdala just mistaking their friend or person that they know waving as a potential threat. Now the same goes for the soldiers with battle trauma, which is another word for PTSD, caused by um, or through military action. Once a pattern is in the amygdala, any sight or sound, any of these things here that is reminiscent of the traumatic event can set the path for feeling massive anxiety. An example here would be, say, a soldier walking down the street and then being flooded with panic after hearing a car backfiring or a helicopter going overhead. This can happen, this reaction where the amygdala fires off this um, red alert signal. It can happen any time, the day or night. And this is the cause of so much of the distressing symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, all of these reactions precede rational thought and happens at a level way below consciousness. And that is why it's almost impossible to think your way out of a panic. Anyone who believes you just need to get a grip is not understanding that old instinctive part of your brain is causing this and it bypasses rational thought. All the thinking is housed in this part of the brain and whilst that thought of that past situation is tagged with high anxiety, causes the adrenals to, to flare up, the hippocampus will not let it through to long-term storage where it can't arouse the anxiety. And I'm going to just go through that with you again because it's very important in understanding PTSD. When something that has happened has caused high anxiety and that thought gets housed in the amygdala, the amygdala lays our emotional responses onto events and things that happen to us. When it gets tagged with high emotion, so it reacts to the things in our environment that are similar, the hippocampus locks that memory in this part of the brain, in the old part of the brain. So we can't be rational about it, we can't think about it logically, and it stops it coming in to long-term storage. Now, PTSD can happen to anyone. About 20% of people who are exposed to trauma will go on to develop PTSD. For the rest, this is what happens. The nasty event or unpleasant event starts here and then through a process of just generally feeling less anxious about it, what happens is the hippocampus allows that thought through to the neocortex. Now that's what the brain naturally tries to do. Take the thought that has been unpleasant it might remain kind of bouncing around here for a short while, but then eventually it'll come through to the neocortex where you can think back to something that not very nice that had happened um, in the past and it now feels okay. With PTSD, it stays locked in this part of the brain. Okay, so you now understand what causes the symptoms that cause PTSD. If you want to know what to do to stop that happening, listen to video four. You will also learn why the rewind technique, which is the technique that we use to overcome PTSD, is so incredibly effective and very, very fast working too.